Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. He's back. Buddha, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris in one person. Jeff Darrow's Shaolin Cowboy roams for the fourth time the post-apocalyptic wastelands of Mega Country. Even though the character was created much earlier by Darrow, it first came to my attention with its hardbound collection called The Shaolin Cowboy Champ Buffet. Beginning with a tongue-in-cheek one-and-a-half-page summary of the story so far in the tiniest font they could, could, it print it, could print it in, obviously just a joke which becomes clear at the latest when you read the actual comic whose story can be summarized just with one sentence. The Shaolin Cowboy slays zombies with a bow staff with a chainsaw at each end. Full stop. So the series starts plot-wise almost at nil, but visually at eleven, gloriously gory and absurd. After that, nobody should be surprised about all the enemies our hero has to deal with in the following collections called Who'll Stop the Rain and Start Trek. While almost unrecognizable, some plot develops within the visual feast and bombardment of details. There are dinosaurs, gangsters and cars with crab legs, dinosaurs, huge pigs, dinosaurs, Nazis and all kinds of other human waste. So no wonder that Trump is all over the fourth Shaolin Cowboy collection called Cruel to be Kin. A Commodore Dragon tells his son about his origins and how the Shaolin Cowboy saved him from beating, being eaten by his own dad eventually his son's granddad, and how he was taught not to eat his own offspring, much to the benefit of his son. It goes without saying that this origins origin story is again full of fantastic visual absurdity, like the baby man riding on a monstrous jellyfish and all the junk, the defecating, procreating and smoking animals everywhere, while everybody is stuck to their porn sites on their smartphones. It's funny and very bitter and all that I've told you right now is just the start of this, um, yeah, this absurd and strangely enough highly enjoyable ride. It's a, such a yeah, tragic and melancholic world. You can't actually use the word sad anymore because uh, it brings already to your mind uh, the guy who used this word again and again like and probably he's the saddest of them all the most saddest oh yeah um anyhow here we have the two lizards there and, and that's such so great when uh Sun uh, Komodo Dragon uh, lits up the cigarette here for his father. But you see that Darrow is just a master storyteller. Uh, I mean, we got the story told through uh, the words of that daddy Komodo Varan, or Dragon, um, who tells about his very first hours in the world when he met uh, the uh, Shaolin Cowboy. And so we see the Shaolin Cowboy through his eyes and through his perspective or vice versa. And just a wonderful page <laughs> amidst all this chaos and blood. Then we have Baby Man who has actually a misalliance <laughs> out of his own genetic pool or gene pool, how it's called later on by his brother. Uh, there you have him on top of this giant jellyfish, which flies uh, through the desert, hunting down our Shaolin cowboy down there. But of course, our Chuck Norris, uh, or Shaolin Cowboy, uh, he knows some tricks to use the skeleton from a dinosaur and especially the skull here. <laughs> Look at that. 
it's almost Atsak uh, back again here. And uh, then he chops off his head uh, through the skull there. I mean, I don't know if you can see this <laughs> in, um, amongst all the details and, and other stuff that uh, Darrow just draws like no other. <laughs> then that baby man um, reanimates or resurrects these uh, skeletons um, who drive uh, this car then and trying to hunt down our hero <laughs> which obviously has to fail but brings him at least in a difficult situation right there. And I love it how these um, bullets, uh, the empty bullets fly through the empty um, skull there, through his jawbone. It's so di dynamic, all the movements are so on point and uh, it, I mean it can't get too cra so crazy that Jeff Darrow can't draw it, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, he's just too able to draw each and every crazy idea that comes to him. And he really indulges in, in these ideas. Some There are some killing sequences here in this book that last for pages and pages, but you uh, don't want to miss any panel of this, this stuff here. Here we have a reference to, I guess it's uh, that old video by Björk. Um, wonderful. Each double page, each page, uh, and each panel is filled to the brim with ridiculous details but it becomes especially ridiculous when we reach the city. Here we have the two Komodo dragons there, who have recognized there's our Shaolin cowboy there amongst all the uh, human trash there, the tattooed masses, so to speak. Come on, focus here. And yeah, uh, um, <laughs> just look at this dog here. That's the most un Disney dog I've ever seen in, in a comic book. He's the uncutest <laughs> and uh. Nevertheless, cool, coolest, one of the, these cool creatures here in the whole book. Um, the play with the perspectives and, and all that, it's, it's just amazing and uh, makes me speechless here. But maybe what distinguishes this fourth iteration of the Shaolin Cowboy from his, uh, its predecessors is uh, the amount of social commentary, the bitterness. Uh, this is maybe the high point in, in this regard. This creature here singing, uh, well, sort of the American uh, hymn, the anthem, the twisted, strange and yeah, crazy um, fight ensues over pages and pages and it's just big fun. And we have um, a comeback of the hog, this giant pig with the pierced nipples and you can see what, uh, what's, uh, yeah, uh, connected to his hits nipples there. I finish uh, this video with um, a view into, yeah, is this uh, Trump's headquarter? I don't know. But um, actually we can see here uh, a very interesting specimen uh, uh, 
in terms of the tattooed masses here. I mean, <laughs> this, but this a tattoo here on his belly. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just a fantastic read. I mean, um, if this is not the best uh, comic collection of this year, uh, then there has to be something really, really good. Uh, one remark before I leave, um, and I think it's pretty important to know that you don't have to read uh, all the other Shaolin Cowboy collections before you can understand this one here. There's just so much uh, connection between uh, the others, you don't really need it. You for sure want to read the other stuff here when you have read this one here, but this is a good starting point like all the others are. Maybe um, don't start with uh, Champ Buffet because well, this is actually really just a one-note joke, but a fantastic one-note joke. While the others really, um, yeah, explore some interesting storytelling, and especially uh, the new one excels with um, this bitter uh, political satire. Um, it's very bitter and very harsh, and yeah, and you will love it. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.